Hello and welcome back to MTG Play. This is Garrett, your host, and I would like to apologize for the previous video. Uh, we had a technical difficulty. Everybody here over at MTG Play, we're still learning and we're still new. We look forward to all of our subscribers. So go ahead and if you like the content you've seen so far in the previous videos, go ahead and like. Don't forget to click the subscription and then don't forget to get the notifications so we can ring you every time a new video uploads. In this video, we're going to be going over the Jumpstart series. We will not be playing them, but before we get into that spellcasting, as a little gift to everybody, we're going to open the promo pack. And this is a bit of an apology for the editing error and a mess up on my part as well. We're going to save this code until after we're done with all of Core 2021. At least the next video, Jarrett's going to open up a box, and I'm going to open up a box. Later on in the channel, this will be Jarrett's, and you never know what we could pull. We're going to be trying to set up a TCG store soon, so with that TCG store, we're going to try to be selling everything we open to the Road to Double Masters. Double Masters is going to be having double rares and double mythics in every pack, so we're hoping to turn these two boxes into at least one Double Masters box. We started off with 400 regular boxes, and now who knows where we're going to go from there. So the Knight of Eben Legion, that's going to be one black for a 1-2, for two generic and one black. This creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains death touch in one end of turn. Now what makes this a rare for a one drop is, at the beginning of your end step, if a player lost four more life this turn, put a one counter on this creature. The next one, oh, Flourishing Fox Cycling Promo. All right, this goes in the cycling deck. You can either pay one generic, one of any color, which that means, or you can build off this and make a cycling. It isn't standard right now, so let's see what our third card is. And Fiend Artisan. I've been looking for this card personally because this card is going to be a hit in standard. Or a while back, Grim Flare was the best two drop for this color combination, which is Golgari, and I feel that Fiend Artisan is going to give uh, even Tarmogoyf some trouble. All right, so we're going to put these aside, and let's get into Jumpstart. So we're going to Jumpstart into Jumpstart with Spellcasters. This deck will be Spellcasters and Wizards. Okay. So Charm Break Devils. This is a six drop. Pardon me. This is a six drop for a four four. So that'd be, I'm curious why it's a rare then. At the beginning of your upkeep, return an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard to your hand. And then, whenever you cast a spell or a sorcery spell, instant or sorcery spell, this creature is plus four plus oh, so that makes sense. So then, if you were to pay seven mana, you're hitting them for eight, essentially. Dual cast mage. Interesting. Human wizards. Maybe wizards was the right combination to go for this one, whether it was random dice or just what was pulled. And what I did was I did roll some dice, and I decided some decks. I decided that for two decks, and the other two I decided to make on my own. This one happened to be one that I decided to put together. Originally, a dual casting was with, later on, I'll show you, but for now, originally it was with the Phyrexian pack, and that is with a different pack for this video. So you never know what could happen. For one generic, two red, and a two-two, flash, Whenever dual caster's mage enters the battlefield, copy target instant or sorcery spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. So let's say you pay something for one mana. You paid this for three. Now you need another mana to pay for that original one. So that's going to cost five. So minimum costing for this to have the most beneficial effect is you need to be able to have five mana open. So living lightning. Three generic and one red. Two, three. I mean, a three, two. Three power and two toughness. When this creature dies, return target instant sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So it is all spells matters. Not all storms come from the sky. Chandra's Praline. So one generic and one red for a 1 3. For a 2 drop, that's a pretty good battle. Whenever a source you control deals non combat damage to an opponent, Chandra's Praline gets plus 1 plus 0 and gains double strike on the end of turn. So it'll do first strike damage and then regular strike damage if it lives through a first strike, first strike combat. If not, it'll deal first strike and then it goes into regular combat damage and the both creatures will deal damage at the same time. Um, I think Chandra just wanted something to blame random Scorch Mox on. Kinetic Augur, 3 generic and 1 red. 
a so star and a four for four man Interest, intriguing with trample so this thing is going to get bigger over time and if i do believe uh oh it was at the bottom of this pile yep that is the arc this was the deck surrounded all around this card centered around this card so trample it's pop this creature's power is equal to the number of instants and sorceries in your graveyard so graveyard matters with spells matters at the same time they're synergistic to make this one deck I'm curious how Wizards is going to impact this, because this is a human shaman. When this creature enters the battlefield, discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. So it's just card advantage on a stick. When I refer to that, I mean on a creature. Usually an instant or sorcery spell would do. So for one generic and one red, it's a 2-2. Two -two. So this, these cards seem to be a little bit more lower to the ground with bigger creatures coming in as your bombs. And when I say that, I'm talking, I'm referring to bread. Uh, bombs, removal, evasion, rest, everything else that you have in your pool. And within this card pool is two different packs of that'll make 40 cards. So prowess for two twos whenever you cast an whenever you cast a non-creature spell. So anything that's not a creature and not a land, lands aren't cast, they are played once per turn. Then pay one red, sacrifice this creature, it deals damage equal to his power to a creature planeswalker. So that means what you'd want to do is hold off one red. Pump this up a few times by playing some spells, doing some things, and then you just sacrifice it for its prowess added on your two. Good old shock. So one mana, deal two damage to any target. Thrill of possibilities. Now what intrigues me about this card is that it's instant speed. Being instant speed card advantage for red is definitely going to be intriguing going forward in the standard. One generic, one red, instant speed means you have to play on either person's turn. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card, so you would have to discard a card, and then you could draw two cards. Right now, these first moments of creation, is it is simultaneously nothing and everything. Alright. Dragon fodder. So this is a way to make creatures and play spells at the same time. So in the deck called Spells Matters, this is what it's referring to. Spells that do what you need to be able to do in other situations. So sometimes you need can prepare for those, and sometimes it's random. So one generic and one red for sorceries. Only on your turn, creature tokens create two one one red goblin creature tokens. Hungry Flames deals two generic and one red. This card deals three damage to target creature and two damage to that target player or planeswalker. So that means if there is a planeswalker in the field, this can help you deal with that. And sometimes those get a little out of hand. So we have a two mana, two one with prowess. Thermal Alchemist, this used to be in my cube, and it might still be. I have to double check. So one generic and one red at zero, zero, 003. So it's a good blocker, and it's a defender, so that's what it's designed to do. But here's the kicker. Tap one. This creature deals one damage to each opponent. You can do that on the end of your player's, on the opponent's turn. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, untap Thermal Alchemist. Madness can't touch mind ignited by genius. And then we, this is this, the cycle of lands is going to be interesting in Popper. So this land enters the battlefield tap, so enter this way. As this land enters the battlefield, choose a color other than red. So map for red or the chosen color. So this is able to go in any deck that has needs red and splashes for another color. It's mana fixing, and then the rest are lands. So there's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven lands. So when you're going to build a 40-card deck, you usually want 16 or 17 lands. It'll be interesting to see the variation uh, for all of these, whether the lands or not. So on this one, we have eight lands. And I'm curious if the other, this one will have seven, or they all have eight, so you can have 16 lands. So let's go on to Wizards. Oh, so Tolarian Sky Summoner, or Tolerand Sky Summoner. So this will go with the Spells Matters perfectly. It is a Merfolk Wizard. Two generic, two blue, for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, create a 2-2 two -two blue drake um, creature token with flying. So in this instance, it's making a token. I'm going to be curious if it'll be a token or a land in the bag. Ship Wreck Dowser, another Merfolk Wizard. So three generic, two blue, three three with prowess. Whenever this enters the battlefield, return target instant sorcery card from graveyard to hand. So this is a good combination of spells matter. My personal favorite mechanic, bounce. Two generic, one blue for a two two. 
When this creature enters the battlefield, turn target, return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Successful battles start with knowing who's worth fighting. Now we have another instance, kind of like Goblin Fodder, but it's a little bit bigger, because this makes two twos for flying. So that means for the other was two mana for two creatures. Add an extra power toughness. So we, we bumped it up. So now we're, it would be a three drop, but giving it flying makes this a four drop. And then Wizard's Retort. So there was another one, Wizard's Lightning, that was red design. It would deal three damage for one mana if you control a wizard. This will counter a spell if you control a wizard for just two mana. Frost Breath, two generic, one blue. Tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during those controllers on the tap step. A good old opt. The Arcanist. Um, for Merfolk Wizard, once again, it's a good body at a 1-3. Befuddle, a good just draw spell, but it also stops your opponent from being a big creature, hitting you for too much or killing one of your own. All right, this one, when it enters the battlefield, scry two. Honestly, um, I, if it doesn't come up, what I would have probably done is, um, I might be Omen Speaker. Omen Speaker, I can't remember if it's a wizard or not, but I feel like it's a wizard and not a shaman. I would put Omen Speaker in this spot because of the better body. So we're coming down here, and oh, we got some more cards. But I'm curious about the token. So we didn't receive a token for that. So you will need tokens to play Jumpstart if you want to play it. Um, when you could play have tokens at your local LGS. Again, always go to your local LGS as much as you can. But during COVID, we don't have the ability to always go inside the shop. But luckily, there's always curbside pickup. So go ahead and message on Facebook, or go ahead and call down to your local LGS and find out what exactly they're doing. You can later on next month and this month have the opportunity to open up some Jumpstart. We're just trying to get a Jumpstart on Jumpstart, allowing you all to preview the cards. So then, um, this spell costs one less to cast. If you control a creature with flying, draw two cards. So that's where the Drakes kick in. And our final spell, Read the Tides. Five generic and one bloom for a common. Choose one, draw three cards, or return up to three target creatures that are to their owner's hands. Shots and instruments work fine, but the best navigators aren't above a spell or two to nudge the tides in a more favorable direction. And then the Thriving Isle, this same thing. We're in the cycling, so this is going to be a red-blue deck. And that's how the Wizard's deck and Spellcaster's deck would come together. You would be playing, playing some spells, having creatures back up and doing stuff while you're trying to keep up the tempo. So I think that this deck would have been very well together. Thank you very much for being here today uh, on the YouTube channel, MTG Play. Again, my name is Garrett. We really do appreciate you spending your time with us. And we're looking forward to making some future content for what you all would want to see. So go ahead and comment below what you exactly would like to see. Go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and hit that notification, we can ring it every time that we come up with a new video and release it. We'll be making more of a series, and like I said, I'm going to be opening Core 2021 in a future video. I'm going to open this more Jumpstart, and Jared and Chad will be back to open up our final box of Core 2021 on this road to the Masters. Can we make it? Have a wonderful day. This is MTG Play, Garrett speaking, and thank you for letting me host. Goodbye.